we have uh, solar cells represented, uh, solar fuels and, and bioenergy. We won't have a talk today on um, uh, solar thermal. Uh, and uh, I'm going to say uh, a few things more about solar cells and, and um, I'll let the other speakers uh, introduce uh, 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 solar fuels and bioenergy. Uh, there have been remarkable advances uh, in photovoltaics um, over the last uh, five or six years or so. And uh, on this um, uh, uh, plot here, uh, you can see uh, in the uh, solid blue, uh, that's the price of the modules. Uh, and uh, in the last five years, that's what's really come down remarkably uh, from about f uh, $4 per watt. Uh, to around 50 to 70 cents per wa uh, watt, depending on who you ask. Um, then the, the upper, uh, the green curve there, that's the total cost of installation. And uh, what you see, one of the things that um, has, has shifted is that where uh, more than half of the cost used to be in the module, uh, now a, a, a very significant fraction of it is in the installation uh, itself. And... Uh, so there's still a, a need uh, uh, to, to work on that part of the problem. Uh, you know, solar is um, it's becoming economically competitive, especially here in, uh, in California, and uh, it's, it's growing uh, very rapidly, and uh, we expect that to start to catch on in other states, and uh, it's also doing uh, very well in places like Saudi Arabia and China and uh, Japan. Um, On this plot, you can see uh, the, the global installations, and uh, it had been growing at about, uh, typ typically it will be about 30 to 40 percent uh, per year uh, growth. Um, it, uh, it leveled out a little bit uh, last year, uh, but it's still uh, continuing to grow. And uh, you know, at about 35 gigawatts per year, and that's about the uh, equivalent of, of installing 35 uh, power plants. So uh, solar is really starting to become a significant uh, source of power uh, generation. But we should not uh, declare that the mission uh, is accomplished. Uh, uh, and solar panels are, are not uh, completely ready. Um, we should continue uh, to do more uh, research. Um, the, the efficiency of the most of the modules that sold is uh, about 15 uh, to 20 percent. And if you can raise that, then uh, you don't have to install as many panels. And so effectively, uh, your installation costs uh, start to uh, go down. And uh, so I, th I think they're still uh, important uh, to push on that. And uh, if we look at where solar is and, and where a lot of people uh, think it can go, my best estimate is that we're about 2% there um, on, the, on the market size. Um, and, and, and when you're only 2% of the way, um, you don't want to uh, say, oh, we, we can stop R&D now. Um, we have uh, the, the, the panels that we need. And um, you know, if, if you look at technology, uh, most things continue to improve. And uh, I, I think the solar panels in 10 and 20 years will be significantly better uh, than the ones that we have now. And here are just some of the opportunities uh, for improvement. Um, uh, in addition to raising efficiency, uh, people would like to replace glass with plastic uh, to lower costs, but also weight. There are a lot of roofs that uh, can't handle the weight of being covered uh, by solar cells. Um, it's desirable to make the, the panels um, flexible and incorporate them directly into uh, the roofing material, uh, which is another way effectively to lower um, installation costs. Um, but then, uh, you know, there are completely different directions. There's uh, reducing the cost of um, uh, permitting uh, and finding customers. Uh, for me, a shocking statistic is that a lot of the companies pay 50 cents per watt um, just in advertising, marketing, and finding customers. <laughs> Uh, because a lot of people call for a quote um, for eight or nine different companies and, and only pick one of the companies. So a lot, a lot of the money just goes right there. 
Um, there's a, a need for figuring out better ways to uh, finance uh, solar cells, get the right financial packaging, and, and a lot of this also has to do um, with uh, how the interest payments are, are taxed um, and how that stacks up uh, compared to other kinds of energy investments. Um, and then, you know, perhaps beyond the solar itself, uh, for solar to be widely um, implemented, uh, we'll have to deal with the intermittency, and uh, this is where um, a smarter grid can help, and um, if, if more people are driving electric vehicles, that may end up helping, especially if the utility can control um, when those cars are being uh, charged. Uh, and then, of course, improving storage is a highly desirable thing, and, and, and batteries could come in there, but that's where the, uh, the, the, the first talk will be on solar fuels, and, and if we harvest uh, sunshine and, and generate a fuel instead of electricity, uh, then, then we can address that. And finally, uh, it never hurts to mention that a carbon tax would be helpful for the solar industry. Uh, and just to introduce a couple um, of, of the highlights, um, perovskite semiconductors have emerged in the last couple of years, and uh, just a few years ago, there was one research group looking at it, and the efficiency was at 4%, and uh, now I don't even have this up to date. The, the, the world record in just a couple of years has climbed up to 17.9%, uh, and um, uh, Pro Professor Karunadasa will uh, uh, talk about how these solar cells can uh, be developed in, in the second talk. Um, here within GSEP, um, one of the avenues we're pursuing to raise the efficiency uh, is to make low-cost tandems, and the idea here is to uh, leverage the silicon or the copper indium gallium selenide that uh, is, is already commercially successful, and then put a high band gap solar cell on top of that and uh, that cell will harvest the higher energy photons and, and generate a higher voltage than the, um, the lower cell could. And, and uh, one way to think of it is, is it, it's upgrading a product uh, that, that already uh, exists today.